We're on a series called Hidden in Christ, and if you didn't get the preview, if you didn't get the First Things First sermon, you can go online to listen to that, First Things First, that we need to understand before we talk about being hidden in Christ. The answer to the question is, you are hidden in Christ. So what's the question? The question is, who are we really? Who are we really? Not who do the marketers think we are, not who does our culture think we are. Who are we really? Who does God say we are? That's the question. And the answer is, you are hidden in Christ. You have been raised with Christ. You're seated at my right hand. That's who you are. And that changes everything. With the staff, I've been working on this uh, passage, Colossians 3, 1 through 17. For those of you who don't know, studying through this, we're memorizing Colossians 3, 1 through 17. I encourage you to do that. Well worth the effort. And uh, the staff and I have been working on it for, what, three months? So I've got the first verse down. <laughs> Everything else is a little gray, a little cloudy. And of course, I have it right in front of me. So since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Since then, more than anything else, we need to grasp that it isn't someday, maybe, potentially, if you're good enough, if you deserve it, if you earn it, if you're a success at this, if you go to church often enough, if you give enough money, if you build enough schools, if you go on enough mission trips, there is no condition. Since then, you have been raised. Period. We're the ones who keep trying to put conditions on it. There are no conditions. God says you have been. Period. So my number one challenge to you is to stop putting conditions on your status in Jesus Christ. You have been raised. You are seated at the right hand of God. Now what's wrong with that? Why don't we live like that then? If that is true, and it is, why don't we live like that? It's a good question. I'm glad you asked. Could it be that we really don't understand and we really don't believe? And when I say believe, I don't mean intellectually. I mean we don't believe so much that we actually trust that. God says it. We say we believe it. But the bumper sticker really needs to say, God said it, I believe it, that settles it. It says, it really should say, God said it, I trust it. That changes that. See, belief and intellectual assent is not enough, folks. If you don't truly trust it, if you don't base your life on it, if you don't make decisions about it based on that, you don't really believe it. If it is really true and you really believe it, it will affect the way you make choices. It will affect the way you live your daily life. Because when we are raised with Christ, it is not just for anything. It's that we have been raised to new life. Romans 6.4 says, Just as Christ was raised from the dead, through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. And that's the entire point, you see. When we have been raised with Christ, and we have been, at the moment we believed, at that microsecond that the Holy Spirit regenerated our souls and our hearts and our minds and gave us the new life in Christ, we have been given new life. The old is gone, the new has come. It's new life. That's the point of being raised with Christ. So what does that mean? Well, it means that now all of those things that the passage in Colossians talks about, like forgiving, truly forgiving, and forbearing, putting on compassion and kindness and humility, getting rid of rage, anger, malice, slander, getting rid of all of the lying from our lips, all of those things that we're told we are supposed to do, we look at that list, and if we don't really believe that we have a new status in Christ, they can seem insurmountable. How can I ever possibly do all of that honestly? If we're going to be really honest, 
The truth is, apart from Christ, you can't. See, if you try to do that in your own strength, if you try to do that in your own wisdom, in your own power, you're going to fail again and again and again and again. It takes Christ in your life to do that. And it's the only way it will work. Being raised in Christ has certain things. It means certain things for us. And for me, it means the old perspective has given way to a new perspective. Being raised with Christ, you know when you're at the high point? We lived in Colorado in the mountains. We lived at 9,500 feet. And there is a totally different perspective when you live that far above all of the normal elevations. You see things differently. It's the overlook. And suddenly you see the big picture. That's what Christ gives us. Being raised in Christ gives us the big picture. We start to see things from a new perspective. So whereas before, I thought the greatest thing that I could do was learn to be totally independent, totally self-sustaining. And that's, of course, what my parents wanted too. (laughs) Now I see that the best thing is to learn to be dependent on God. Dependence is better than independence. I used to think that I had to accomplish big things. you got to go big. If you don't go big, go home, right? That's the point of American life. Now I say, you know what? I don't care if it's big. I don't care if it's small because what's most important is the faithfulness in the small things. And if I'm faithful in the small things and God wants it to be a big thing, He'll do it. But it's not up to me. How about you? Have you made the decision to be faithful in the small things and let God make it a big thing? My purposes, my plans, it was all about that. I had a plan for everything with 42 options. In case that didn't work, I'd try option B. If that didn't work, I'd go all the way to Z. How about you? Is that how you live your life? Got everything planned out? Got the options? Got your bets covered? In God's purpose and God's plan, He doesn't work that way. He says, I'm going to give you enough light for one step. You take that step and then I'll tell you what to do next. Living life that way feels like I don't have a whole lot of control. I don't like only knowing the next thing I need to do to be faithful. I would prefer to have the roadmap from A to Z, but God doesn't do it that way. But you know what? I actually kind (laughs) of... Sorta, of, and starting to learn that it's good to take one step at a time and let God determine the rest. And the perspective that we have when we're raised in Christ helps us to do that. We're not only raised to a new perspective, we're raised to a new kingdom. A well known person said, When God's kingdom comes, my kingdom goes. And that's basically the truth that we're trying to learn here. We all have our own little kingdoms that we've been living in. We've been serving ourselves as kings of our own kingdoms, queens of our own queendoms. But when we come to Christ, when we're raised with Him, I'm no longer in the box of my little kingdom. I no longer am conformed to that kingdom. I'm released and suddenly the kingdom that I serve and I live in is much, much greater. An eternal kingdom that knows no bounds. That's the kingdom that we serve. The question is, are you willing to get out of the box? See, we talk about having God in a box, but we also need to talk about ourselves in a box. We've got ourselves boxed in. Because it's comfy and cozy and warm. Will you get out of your box is also a question. It also, being raised with Christ, gives us a perspective on life. And the perspective is the biblical perspective. Corinthians, you are not your own. You don't belong to yourself. You were bought at a price. You belong to Him. You're His. 
So with that perspective, you see, we don't have to live our lives as if we are the center of everything. I don't spend my life now doing everything I can to avoid death because death is no longer so dangerous and so frightening. Death is part of life. And knowing that He has a purpose and a plan that extends beyond death reassures me and gives me the courage to live the life He's called me to live and to die the death He's called me to die. We're called and raised to have courage and power to live authentic lives. I hear at funerals quite often, I just don't know how you make it through without Jesus. Well, I'm I'm sure that that's a well-intended statement, and yes, I know how you make it through without Jesus. You live in denial, you live in avoidance, you live in rationalizing, and you just don't want to face the truth that you're going to die one day, and at that point, you're going to answer, what's your answer going to be? I did it my way. But the truth is, we can't live honest, authentic lives apart from God. And being raised with Christ is all that we need. Because when we're raised with Christ, we have new resources. The new resource, the big resource, is the Holy Spirit Himself, the Spirit of Christ, the gift that He's given us. He's the agent of the raised life. And so if we want to live the raised life, if we truly believe that we've been raised with Christ, we need to learn how to walk in the Spirit so that we will not keep living as if we were not raised. Romans 8. Jesus was raised from the dead, living in you. (laughs) I don't know what I did. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of His Spirit who lives in you. If you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. The agent of the raised life, the power of the raised life, is the Holy Spirit. Are you aware of the Holy Spirit? Do you know the Holy Spirit? Do you welcome the work of the Holy Spirit in your life? Do you know what it means to walk in the Spirit? That's how you live the raised life. And finally, We're raised in Christ to a new reference point. All through the New Testament, we hear about a new reference point. For example, Paul, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. That's a new reference point. How do you reference your life? And we're raised for that new perspective. Let me ask you this. Can you say with Paul, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ, for whose sake I have lost all things? And it doesn't mean you literally have lost everything. It means that compared to knowing Christ, it means nothing. If you could have the greatest wealth, the greatest power, the greatest status. If you could have everything in the world but not Christ, would you take it? What will you do about what you've been told? About what God has said about who you are? What will you do this week? next month, next year. Is it frightening? Absolutely. Walking by the Spirit, new perspective, new new point of reference, new identity, it's scary. But consider this. Imagine how scary it would be not to change. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank You that You have brought us to a new point of reference a new perspective, a new plan, a new kingdom. May we live faithfully now as those who have been called. Grant us Your Spirit, His power, His presence, 
his purpose, that we may be able to live as you've called us to live, glorifying you, Lord, more than anything else. We need those things in our lives, but they can only come as we trust you and know you. So help us now to come near, to pursue you, and know you so that we actually live into the raised life seated at the right hand of God. It's in your powerful name we pray. Amen.